It was a beautiful day out, so I biked to the airport. But this wasn't any ordinary trip. Horace Williams Airport was bought by UNC Chapel Hill in 1940. What once was a bustling, highly active airport offering air shows and flight training for UNC students is now nearly desolate. Operations have been severely limited by the university over the past 20 years in an attempt to close the airport. And the current users today are typically older Caucasian males because flight training is no longer available. The university has cut operations by so much that the terminal is almost always empty. Every time I have been in there, I am alone. Designed to be a source of commune, the terminal is being choked of its potential. People need to realize that Horace Williams Airport is incredibly important to current and aspiring pilots in the Chapel Hill, Carborough region. It is a super convenient resource to those who fly for commerce or recreation and should be injected with new life so that UNC students have a place to enjoy and take part in aviation. In September, I ran into Bob Epting, a local pilot, at the airport. We sat on the tarmac for an hour talking about music, airplanes, and life. He offered me a ride in his airplane and the day finally arrived. You know something is, uh, every time I open this lock, I think about having this being something I've been doing for the last 60 years of my life. Wow. It's the same locker lock as we had in school, you know, for our yeah. lockers. They haven't changed a bit. I mean, I wonder how many gazillions of these locks yeah. have been made and, and, you know, are still in use. Mm -hmm. Mr. Epting owns a 1946 Piper J3 Cub that is in absolute pristine condition with almost original everything, including the engine and gauges. It is in such great condition that it won the Grand Champion Prize at Oshkosh in 2012 during the 75th anniversary celebration of the Piper Cub. It sports the classic Piper Cub paint job with its dandelion yellow body and iconic black lightning bolt down the side. Everything is just classic Piper Cub, including the Cub logo on the tail and propeller. The interior is just as gorgeous. Everything looks factory new. However, this is a truly small plane. If you're taller than average, you're going to need at least two classes in advanced yoga before getting in and out of this thing. I've flown Piper Cubs in my flight simulator, but now I was going to get to see how this real-life 70-year-old bird flies. Mr. Epting hand-cranked the prop and we were ready to go fly. Told you about the yoga thing. As soon as we started rolling, Mr. Epting and I were breaking the paradigm of this relatively inactive airport. We were going to fly for the heck of it because it's something we love and politics shouldn't get in the way of that passion. I should mention that in addition to my regular camera, I also had my Contour Rome attached to the windshield, but I forgot to rotate the lens. Mr. Epting informed me on our game plan. Yes. We're going to take off and go down over the Jordan Reservoir, and uh, we're going to land over here in I hadn't been in a general aviation airplane in over three and a half years, and the wait was finally over. Time to go flying.
We flew over downtown Chapel Hill and the UNC campus. It was out of this world cool. The weather was perfect and everything was in clear sight. Franklin Street, Hill Hall, Keenan Music Building, the Upper Quad, Memorial Hall, the Pit, everything. Including... flight was progressing beautifully. I was looking out the window trying to film everything I could while I had this opportunity. I was privileged to be flying at all, but little did I know Mr. Epting would ask me this next question. We were flying over the north end of the reservoir, cruising at about 60 miles an hour and 750 feet AGL. I was looking at the instruments and out the window for traffic, but couldn't help but laugh at times. I couldn't believe I was flying a plane once again. I hadn't practiced a 360 turn in over three and a half years, so I knew I'd be a bit rusty. My goal was to maintain a constant altitude by pulling up on the stick to counteract the loss of vertical lift. However, I realized quickly that maintaining a constant bank angle with no attitude indicator was quite challenging. 
Additionally, I accidentally let the speed dip a little bit. The Piper Cub operates in a very narrow speed band, and I wasn't as vigilant about that as I should have been. Everything was fine, though, and I learned for next time. Mr. Epting took the controls back for a bit and flew me around an old coal factory that was shut down for environmental reasons. The coal factory had large ponds that it would dump its ash and waste into. He explained to me that these ponds were notorious for leaking and found one day while flying that the leak was draining right into the river adjacent to the factory. Mr. Epting called them out on it and it ultimately led to the factory's closing because its actions were a Federal Clean Water Act felony. It was crazy to see how close the proximity of the ponds, canals, and the river is. Which is a federal thing we're on felony. Wow. We're talking to man about that. Look at all the space that they have. All this has to be disposed of. We turned back towards home, and Mr. Epting gave me back the controls. Our plan was to follow the Cape Fear River until we reached the small town of Bynum, where we would turn to follow the highway until we got back to Chapel Hill. As I was flying over the river, I remembered something my instructor said at my last flight lesson way back in April 2012. He told me to follow a road, and so I flew exactly over it, turning with each curve in the road's path. He said to me, why are you following the road like that? The advantage of flying is that you're not held hostage by where the pavement is. Just go straight. Almost four years later, I took his advice and flew the Cubs straight along the river.
The sun began to set and the sky transformed into 360 degree art. Color surrounded us and was accentuated by the autumn hues on the ground. As time went on, I became more comfortable piloting the cub. However, I do not recommend flights longer than an hour in the front seat. My comfort in that aspect was decreasing each minute. Mr. Upton gave me instructions down the highway, and then we anchored on a water tower in the distance. We flew past the university and the town, and the airport was right in front of us. I was confused because it seemed we were entering a left traffic pattern, but I didn't know what the approach was or if he wanted me to descend. crossed over the field and entered the traffic pattern for runway 9. As we prepared to land this old bird, the sunset bathed us in warm reds and oranges. With calm winds and clear skies, it was going to be a perfect end to this spectacular hour. I cannot begin to thank Mr. Epting enough for sharing his time and giving me a free ride, let alone giving me the controls of his prized airplane for the majority of the flight. I'm very much looking forward to our next flight together. He's a great guy and advocate for general aviation. Oh my 
my gosh. It's amazing that little engine, <laughs> 75 years old, just runs like a sewing machine. I hope this video showcases the importance and the great history that Horace Williams Airport holds behind its doors. I'm calling for a rejuvenation of aviation in Chapel Hill. With so much at stake, this is the time to act. UNC students have been active in local aviation for decades, and the university should not be able to take that away from us. Flying is an aspiration, a dream, and no one should stop us from growing wings.